we'll sing this softly with him. Say, Majesty, Majesty. Come on and say, How I worship. Oh, Majesty. It is how I bless you. You. For you alone are worthy of my praise. <laughs> Come on, let's do it again, do it again, Majesty. Majesty. It is how, how I worship.
and open your mouth and sing it just one more time. Whoa, you are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, 
I'll give Brother Lou a hand. (laughs) 
Come on, band. Come on, put those hands together with them. What you gonna do when you get saved? I'm gonna raise my hands up. What you gonna do when you get saved? I'm gonna raise my hands up. Tell me what you gonna do when you get saved? I'm gonna raise my hands up. Tell me what you gonna do when you get saved? I'm gonna raise my hands up. Tell me what you gonna do when you get saved? I'm gonna Say, say. I'm gonna wave my hands. Tell me what you're gonna do when you get saved. I'm gonna wave my hands. While I have a chance, right. I'm gonna give him praise. Right. The devil don't like yeah. to, to give God praise. Right. Oh, get up, jump up on your good foot. Right. Tell him, or let's show them how. Right. The devil don't like it when you give my God the praise. What you gonna do on Sunday morning? I'm gonna wave my hands up. What you gonna do on a Sunday morning? I'm gonna wave my hands up. Tell me what you gonna do on a Sunday morning. I'm gonna wave my hands up. Tell me what you gonna do on a Sunday morning. I'm gonna wave my hands up. been good to you, you ought to give him praise. Oh, get us jump up on the good foot. Better, uh, let me show you how. The devil don't like when you give my God to praise. Well, well, say what you gonna do when you get paid. Say, I'm gonna wave my hands. Tell me what you gonna do when you get paid. Say, I'm gonna wave my hands. Tell me what you gonna do when you get your money. You're gonna do when you get paid, yeah. I'm gonna wave my hands up. Come on, put those hands together. I know God has been good to us. Yeah. I know He's been good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on and say, raise up. Send the praise. Your hands, yeah. raise up, raise up, send no praise, send no praise up. Everybody. everybody just clap your hands, everybody just clap your hands, wait, send no praise, send no praise up. Everybody. everybody just clap those hands, everybody just clap those hands, wait, send no praise, send no praise up. Everybody. Everybody just clap those hands. Raise up. 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 Come on, soprano. Oh, <laughs> 
Everybody just clap those hands. Everybody just clap those hands. Raise up. Raise up. Send no praise. Everybody just clap those hands. Come on, clap those hands. Raise up. Raise up. Day 
everybody. The fact that I'm alive is a blessing to me. He keeps right on blessing me every time. He keeps right on over and over again. He keeps us. I can't explain it. I can't obtain it. It's the favor of God. He keeps hey, saying, He keeps right on day by day. When I awake, that is a blessing. He keeps right on. He keeps right on. He keeps right on. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. Every day of my life, he keeps right on. Blessing me. Every time. Say, blessing me. Any blessed folks in the house? Any blessed people in the house this morning? Anybody blessed this morning? Anybody? The fact that you're here, the fact that you're alive, the fact that you're breathing, baby, is a blessing. Get on your feet and put your hands together. Let's rejoice for the blessing. Somebody said, I got victory. That's a blessing. Hey, put your hands together. Say, blessing me. He's blessing me. He blessed me once. And he blessed me twice. He keeps on blessing me. Every day of my life, he's blessing me. He's blessing me. Say, blessing me. Blessing me. He's 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 blessing me. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and put your hands together one more time. Give God some praise. Time I turn around, he keeps blessing. Blessing me. Amen, amen, amen. God truly is good. It's just a blessing just to be in the house this morning. Come on, somebody. David said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us all stand as we prepare to read from God's word this morning. Got just a few verses here. It's not too many. We're going to start reading that Second Chronicles chapter number 14. And we'll read verse number 6 there. Then we'll go over to Second Chronicles 15, read verses 1 through 4, and also verse 8. Amen. Are you there? All right. If we got it up on the screen, oh, bless you. Thank you. Amen. Let us read the word of the Lord. Go ahead and read, please. Second Chronicles, verses 1 through 4, 15, 1 through 4.
Verse 8. Amen. You may be seated. And our theme is this morning, focusing in the advance, focusing in the advance. I'm just so excited to stand before such great people of God. Just went to my physical therapist um, a couple of weeks ago, and she says, well, what do you want to do? She says, what do you want to do? I said, well, number one, I want to stand up and preach. I said, I hadn't preached in a long time, and I've been teaching, but I've been sitting down, and so I want to stand up and, and preach. She says, well, I'm going to give you some, some exercises where you'll be able to stand, and you'll be able to preach. And so here I am today standing uh, before you. <laughs> By the goodness of the Lord, there was a time where I couldn't even uh, put my shoes on, couldn't put my socks on, and, uh, you know, sometimes we take things for granted that we have the ability to walk in and go out, uh, but uh, to be able to do those things, amen, you know, God is, is just so good, and I'm just grateful uh, to him, amen. We give honor, amen, and praise to our Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of our life, for without him, we can do nothing, but through him, we can do all things. Somebody say all things, amen. I thank my father in the gospel, Bishop Michael Shelby, amen, man, I've been underneath down through the years. First Lady Shelby, amen, and I'm just so grateful to, uh, for them, grateful for you who makes up the heartbeat of God's house church uh, here today. We seem a little low, and this should not be the case, but when you see some of the ones that's not coming, just go to them and tell them, we sure do miss you. We sure do miss you, amen, amen, and so I uh, invite them that are not coming to come, amen, be a part of the service once again. I want to thank God for my wife who's been there uh, with me in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. You don't know your vows until you go through something. It's not until you go through something that you really begin to start understanding how true those vows are. See, now, if she was going through it and I was not helping her, then the vows wouldn't mean very much. But now here it is, I'm going through. And I need her to be a help to me, and she's been such a great help to me. And I just thank God for, for her, and I thank God for the woman that she is and all that God is doing uh, for her and her love that she has for me. I know she loves me. I know she loves me. Amen, amen. But just for a few minutes, I want to talk about focusing in the advance. In the month of February, I went into the hospital, went into the emergency room. And when I went into the emergency room, they said I had fluid around my heart. I was there for several hours, and they gave me some medication, and they let me go. Come back a month later, in April, a month and a half later in April, I had an attempt on a back surgery. And they said that, well, Mr. Smith, we wasn't able to get to it, but they had me on the table for about five hours. They said, we're going to have to reschedule you. That was on April the 10th. You can imagine how I felt when I woke up. So they said, we're going to reschedule you for May 15th. So on May 15th, I went back and had a successful back surgery. Amen. God is good. God is good. <laughs> but because of everything that my body had went through and the trauma that I had suffered, I end up, my glucose numbers end up shooting through the roof. They told me that I had diabetes. They said my E1C count was at 10.9. They said that my levels was 800 and 59, that I was at coma. I remember sitting down talking to my wife, and I got to the point where I couldn't even speak to her. And they rushed me to the hospital. Matter of fact, they got me in so quick, I was amazed at how quickly they got me in. And they began to start working on me and working on me and working on me. And then a little bit later on, they put me into ICU. The doctors came in, and they, you know, he says, Mr. Smith, he says, you're a dead man. 
he, he gave me a word. He says, you are a dead man. And I guess he thought that I was supposed to be afraid. He, he, he really thought that I was supposed to be fearful because of the information that he was giving me. He says, you have diabetes. I said, well, sir, I didn't know that. I said, matter of fact, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't even understand what diabetes is. Can I say something to you just for a minute? Sometimes we say that we have something, and we say that in the church, we say, well, I'm not going to claim it. No, if you got it, you got it. Let me say that one more time. Don't walk around saying I don't got it when you got it. You walk around limping, telling me I'm not limping. No, no, you limping. Nigga, your neighbor said there's a problem. So you can't deny what it is that you say that you have. Come on, somebody, amen? Or what the doctors say that you have. You can say that I believe it's, that God is able to heal me, and God can heal. But until you get the word, look at your neighbor and say, until you get the word. Well, I'm going somewhere in just a minute. Until you get the word, you cannot assume that the healing is going to, going, going to take place. You got to get the word. See, you got to understand that faith activates out of fact. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It doesn't activate out of fiction. It activates out of what? Fact. It is because of what God has said that now you can activate your faith. Why? Because everything in the word of God is not for you. Oh, oh come on, come on, come on. Can, can I go there just for a minute? I remember pastoring Las Cruces and they had this big old building. I walked around the building seven times because I felt if I walked around the building seven times like Israel did, that I had that building out. It was hot outside, about 110 degrees. I was in full clergy court church attire, looking good. But that's not what the Lord told me to do. But I'm walking around a building doing something that I wanted to do that God didn't tell me to do. The doctor said, he says, listen, he tried to be as hard as he could. He had his little medical students with him. He says, you are a dead man. And I looked at him, I said, who you think you're talking to? He just kind of looked at me, and his students kind of looked like, how are you going to talk to the doctor like this? I said, no, no, no. You don't even understand who I am. I've already gotten a word from the Lord. The Lord told me that the devil was going to try to take my life. He had already told me that months in advance. So whenever it came, what I had to do, I had to get back focused on the word. That God had already gave me when? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to go there today. God had already given me a word where in advance. So all I had to do was just, yeah, 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 yeah. God has already given some of you all a word already in advance. You just got to get, yeah, 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 yeah. If you are out of tune, you can't see the images the way that you need to see them. Because of the diabetes, I couldn't see what I needed to see. Couldn't even see the clock back there. Wouldn't even be able to see the front row. And I'm so glad to see our assistant pastor, Elder Pettiford, a great mentor of mine. Oh, God. I, when I saw him this morning, I, I, I just, I was so elated because he's been such a great man and a great inspiration in my life. And so I'm just so glad to see you, sir, uh, here with us today. And, and the same spirit he had when he left, the same spirit he has when he came back. But even greater wisdom. Amen? So I'm going to make sure I get all that I can. But they said, you're going to die. But I had to get focused. Because at first I was hearing the words. But then I started dialing it in a little bit. Immediately after they told me I had diabetes, they told me, they said, well, listen, well, you got a doctor's appointment coming up, but we wouldn't advise you to go to the doctors right now because your eyes are not calibrated in the way that they need to see and they need to adjust because of the medication. And I said, what is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So don't go and get it right now. Just, 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 just wait a little bit until everything calms down. And so I waited until I was able to get back in focus. Wait until I was able to get back in focus. Can I preach just for a little bit? I feel like I'm about ready to preach in, in a few minutes. When you look at this particular passage of scripture, here we find a group, but not just any group. They are God's selected and chosen people. They're the same ones that God told Abraham, that your people shall be a stranger in a strange land, 
for 400 years, but I'm going to come in and to deliver them and to bring them out. He's talking about the children of Israel. They were in the land of Egypt 400 years. But God sends Moses by to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. He says, and when he lets them go, he's gonna, you're going to serve me on this mountain. You're going to worship me on this mountain. It was at the mountaintop where they received the laws of God. Moses would go up and get the commandments, come back down. Israel rebelled, and because of their rebellion, uh, um, Moses threw the tablets down and yet had to go back up and get another set of tablets in order to come back down. The Bible says that ultimately Israel went into the promised land. Somebody said the land of promise. God had spoke to them and told them about a promised land and began to share with them what he would do with them if they would just obey. If they would just obey how he would bless them and how he would open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing they would not have room enough uh, to receive and how they would be the head and not be the tail. Come on, somebody. I wish I had a few witnesses in the house. He says, you will be the head and, and not be the tail. He says, you will have fruit in your going in and also where? In your coming out. I'm going to do what? Bless you abundantly. He's telling Israel that. But after a while, Israel began to turn away from the Lord. They, re they requested a king. They got a king by the name of King Saul. The Bible lets us know that Saul didn't do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord says, I've chosen a man after my own heart by the name of David. After God chose King David, all of a sudden now we begin to see that the kingdom is going right for a short period of time. After David comes a man by the name of Solomon. Solomon now is, is king. The Bible says that Solomon did right when he was a young man. But whenever he began to get a little bit older, the Bible says he was led away because of his many wives. The Bible says that this man has 700 wives. Se 700? Has 700 wives and 300 concubines. That man has something on his hands. Come on. Amen. And so he had 700 wives, 300 concubines. And the Bible says, and they took his heart and led him away. After this right here, we begin to see because of the evil that Solomon did, the Bible says that he began to start worshiping foreign gods. He began to start worshiping unknown gods. Come on, somebody. He began to start building up things that he shouldn't have been building up. Solomon was the same one who had built the, the temple. And they say that the temple was marvelous. Even the queen of Sheba came in and saw from a, came in from a long distance and saw all that Solomon had done. And she says, listen, she says, I saw all that you have done. She says, but listen, she says, but the story that they're telling about you, the half hasn't even been told. She says, the half hasn't even been told about you. She says, because it's far greater than anything I could imagine. The wisdom that you have is far greater than anything I could imagine. And just to sit at your feet and to hear you begin to speak, it is far greater than anything I could imagine. Then a little bit later on, we begin to see that Solomon has a son by the name of Rehoboam. But under Rehoboam, the Lord splits the kingdom. Somebody say a divided kingdom. The Bible says that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Now we have what? Two nations basically going on. We have Israel in the northern part and we have Judah in the south southern part. Why did God, he gave Israel ten uh, um, tribes and he gave Judah two tribes. Why did God do that? He says, because of my promise that I made unto David, my servant. So I'm going to leave him a uh, heritage. Notice that the kings that came through the bloodline of David, they were all connected to David. But the ones that came through the bloodline of Israel weren't connected like David's uh, bloodline was. Matter of fact, the Bible says that all the kings that came through the line of Israel, the Bible says that they did evil. But the Bible says that there was about six or seven kings that came through uh, the line of Judah that did, did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Here we find a man by the name of Asa. Asa is the third one after the kingdom has already been split. The one that is before Asa is his father. But now Asa, he is the man. Now Asa, he is the one that God has called upon. And the Bible says that he had peace for 10 years. I don't know if you ever know what peace is like, but, you know, man, you can't beat peace. Can I get a witness here? Especially when you start thinking about wars and all those different kinds of things that was around. And the Bible says that they went out and they began to have peace uh, uh, in the land. And so the king, he says, listen, why don't we build some fortified walls? 
Why don't we just make preparation to make sure that everything we need is already in place because we know that the enemy is coming at some point. Look at your neighbor say at some point. Now, you don't know when he's coming, but you know that he's coming. Amen? And so he says we know that the enemy is coming at some point, so we got to make sure that we are prepared whenever he does come. And so he goes in, he fortifies uh, the cities and makes sure that the, that the walls are built and everything that he needs is in place. He goes in, he begins to start tearing down some of the high places and some of the uh, foreign gods that they had made, and they had begun to start worshiping. And what he does, he begins to tell Israel, he says, but we will worship the Lord our God, but 10 years later, 10 years later now, we begin to see a people who come up. The Bible says that the Ethiopians come up against King Asa. He come up against them. The Bible says that Asa has 580,000 troops. But it says that the Ethiopians have a million troops and 300 chariots. In other words, they got a whole lot of people that is coming up against them. And as they come up, the Bible says that they make war against Asa and the children of Judah. But as they begin to make war, the, the Bible says that uh, uh, he prays unto the Lord. Lord God, that there's nothing that is too hard for you. Lord, there's nothing that you are afraid of. And it doesn't matter how big the obstacle may seem. You alone is God all by yourself. And regardless of how big they might seem, here it is. You have the whole power, and you are the one who can deliver us out of this situation. So, Lord God, I pray and I ask today that you would come in and that you would move and that you would be with us. Come on, somebody here. He says, Lord, he says, if you will stand with us, then we shall be delivered. We, sh we, sh we, we shall, we shall be delivered because we know that if you stand for us, come on somebody here, if God be for you, then who can be against you? I know that there's a whole lot of voices that's talking. I know a whole lot of people are talking to you, but if God, somebody say if God, if God be for you, then who can be against you? He, he, he's talking, and the Bible says that all of a sudden, one day, that God, he begins to deliver them out of the hands of the Ethiopians. He delivers them, and God is there with them. But then the prophet, the Bible says, chapter number 15, verse number 1, it says, and the Spirit of God, somebody say the Spirit of God. It says, and the Spirit of God came in among the prophet." And begin to tell him, he says, go to Asa and tell him what I have to say. It's something because sometimes we can hear something so often that we become common with what we hear. But the Bible says it was the spirit of God that came amongst the prophet. I'm not talking about any spirit. I'm talking about the same spirit that stepped out on creation morning. I'm talking about the same spirit that when God says, let there be light, and there was, I'm, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about that spirit. I'm talking about the spirit that came in and changed the situation from bad to good. Can I get a witness in here? I'm talking about whenever you couldn't see, and now all of a sudden, he give you eyes that you can see. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so now, we're talking about that spirit. He says, that spirit, the same spirit, the spirit of God now has come in and now has taken control. He says, I want you to go in. And he says, and I want you to tell Asa what's really, what the real deal is. Have you ever been in a place to where you really didn't know the real deal? Have you ever been in a place where you really didn't understand what was going on in your life? And you were sitting there and you were trying to kind of figure it out. And you were trying to figure out which way God was moving and, and how God was moving in your life. And here it is, we find that we're acing them. Here it is, we got 10 years of peace. But now all of a sudden I got the enemy on my doorstep. Have you ever been in a place to where you didn't know where that enemy came from, but all of a sudden now he's here and he's trying to war up against you? And he looks massive and he looks big and you're trying to figure out what in the world is going on. And the Bible says that he comes in, the Spirit of God comes amongst the prophet. And he says, go and tell Asa this. What do you want me to tell him, Lord? He says, I want you to go and tell him this. He says, for a long time, he says, Israel didn't have any teaching priests, didn't have any teachers. They were going about doing whatever it is that they wanted to do. He says, for a long time, he says, they were making groves and they were going out and worshiping other gods. And so what I did was that I allowed calamity to come and to come and to come. 
And before they could even breathe, I allowed more calamity to come because they had turned their back on the true and the living God. He says, but listen, not so with you. In other words, what he said, he says, don't be the same as Israel was back in the day. He says, because right now what you've done, and I'm talking to somebody in the house today. He says, what you've done is that you've already set your heart that you might know the will and know the word of God, that you might be directed in the place that you should go. He says, keep going. Look at your name. He said, keep going. He says, don't give up. Don't, don't stop. But you got to keep on going in the way that you should go. He says, but know this. There's some backsliding. That has went on. What do you mean, Lord? Well, I see some groves. I see the temple. The altar temple hasn't been like it should. I see foreign gods in the land. But Lord, I took some of them out. He said, yeah. But I still see some stuff. I still see some stuff. There's some stuff that is in there that you need to get rid of and that you need to move. He says, for some reason, you've gotten comfortable and gotten to the place of complacency because everything was going well with you. But now the storm has come into your life and I allowed the storm to come because I want you to understand that, hey, listen, you are getting ready to go into a place of ruin if you don't correct the situation. I need you to go back I need you to get back on your hands and knees. And I need you to get back at your fasting plate. Come on, somebody here. I need you to come back to the household of faith. Come on, I wish I had a witness over here. I need you to start praying again. I need you to start seeking again. I need you to start calling on the name of the most high God. He says, listen, don't get caught up. Last Monday as I was praying, 8.01 in the morning. I don't know who this is for. You don't have to say anything to me either. 8.01 in the morning. The Lord gave me this word. He says, you've been riding in the car as an innocent bystander. He says, exit the car and ride no more with them. For trouble is on the horizon for all who ride in the car. Now, somebody said, well, Oda, how do I know if it's me or not? The Lord says, because as the word was spoken in your spirit, there came a great sickness over your body even to the point of vomiting and nausea. Therefore, you will know that is you. He says, even today, do not ride with them again, but seek alternative measures to go home. You will become nausea and sick with a great sense of weakness in your limbs, almost to the point of immobility. As I speak this word under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I don't know who that's for, but you know. When we're talking about advancing, when we're talking about moving forward, God gives us a word on how to move forward. He gives us the opportunity to stay focused. One of the things that Asa had to do, the Bible says that Asa had to Take courage. Don't you know that you're going to have to be encouraged in order to manifest the word that God has put in your life? Because you will go down to prayer, and then after you get up from prayer, see, you're feeling good in your prayer moment. But then after your prayer moment is over with, the enemy comes knocking at your door, telling you, hey, listen, I know this is what the Lord says, but I, I, I know you should do it this way, but, but really the real deal is that you need to focus in on the advanced word that you've already heard. He told Joshua, he says, be strong 
and very courageous. Why do I need to be strong and very courageous? I don't understand that, Lord. Why do I need to be strong and very courageous? Anybody here have a favorite scripture? You got a favorite scripture, and then sometimes when you initially got the scripture, you didn't understand what it, understand, understand what it meant. But now as time has went on, now that scripture has become a little bit more real and real to you. And you begin to understand it even more. And now you're saying, man, this is my favorite scripture. This is the one I walk around with me and I carry all the time. You better carry it with you. Come on, somebody, amen. Because you're going to need that favorite scripture all over again. God didn't put that scripture in your heart for no reason. For it just to pass you by. But he put the scripture there for the purpose that you might, what, advance. Not only advance, but you might be focused on the advance, that you can get through whatever it is you need to get through rather than staying in the place that you used to be. God has spoken, and what he wants to do, he wants to deliver his people. He wants to call his people out of darkness and to do what brings them where? Into a marvelous light. He told him, he says also, he says, put away all the abominable things. Look at your neighbor and say, put it away. I don't know what you need to put away, but thou knowest there are some things that we got to put aside. Come on, somebody, amen. Some of us have heard, had some hurt feelings. Some of us got some unforgiveness. Look at your name and say, put it away. Now, I know you're saying, well, how do I put it away? Well, ask the Lord for help. I have a hard time forgiving. Well, ask the Lord for help. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. We wouldn't have all these mass shootings going on, amen? But because we have the Lord who is on our side, it is our responsibility to go to the Lord and ask the Lord, Lord, I need your help. I'm having a hard time forgiving this person. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't always been here. You, it, it, you ain't always been here. And so there's some things that we got to do and that we got to comprehend and recognize and understand that, you know what, Lord, I need your help. In this situation, I need you to stand with me in this situation. Lord, they keep on sounding the alarm. They keep on talking about me. They keep on putting me down. Lord, I got debt collectors coming after me. What shall I do even now? And the Lord says, stand still. He says, what? You know, he says, I just want you just to do it. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You don't have to go by every little wind that comes your way and try to figure out what to do when God has already given you what to do. And, and, and what he's giving you sometimes is just to stand still. You can't focus when you're moving. Because it keeps on changing. And so every time you try to line it up and get it in focus, it changes on you. So then you got to stop. Oh, oh, it. You got to stop. Look at your neighbor and say, stop. They say the best pictures are the steel pictures. Unless you got one of those high-powered cameras and stuff like that. Now, I don't have one of those. And so I got my little stuff be everywhere. Be all over the place. Just be blurred up. But they say the best pictures are the steel pictures when you can see and it's really in focus. And you didn't zoomed in and you didn't caught what it is that you need to catch. Have you caught what you need to catch? What is it that the Lord is asking you to catch today? What is it that you need to get focused in on? How is it that you need to seek the Lord? What is it that maybe you haven't given as much attention to that before you were so diehard about, but now your ways have changed? I encourage each and every one of you all, get back in focus. God is speaking. He's giving you a word. And all you have to do is just hold fast to that word. Don't lose it. Just hold fast to it. Amen? The devil got to come, and that's why the enemy came up against Ace and them. Because he came for the simple purpose that he wanted to let Ace and them know, hey, listen, there's some problems in the camp. I wouldn't be here today. This is my first message back. And the Lord told me, he said, speak this word. I was going to talk about love. But this is what Jesus says. He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. 
What is it that the Lord has told you directly that nobody else knows? In your secret time, in your secret place. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my strength. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare and the foul, from the noise and pestilence. Surely he shall cover me with his wings and under his wings. Somebody say, surely. All I have to do is just stay focused in on what the Lord is doing. Stay focused on what he's saying. There's someone here today that you need to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you've been waiting for a while. And you don't have to wait anymore. Today is today. Look at your neighbor and say, today is today. There's someone else you need to be baptized, water baptized. You're saying you came in before you got here. It wasn't this message that really kind of pricked your heart. Your heart was already pricked before you got here. And whenever you get, and you said, today I'm going to do it, Lord. Well, today is your time and your opportunity. We can baptize you today. You can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit today. If that's you, I want you to get up from where you are. And just come on down. Don't worry about who's looking. Come on, somebody. I want everybody, you know, I'm, everybody praying. Everybody praying. Even as those getting ready to come on up. Come on up. Wherever you are this morning, come on. Maybe you got a situation that's going on in your life and you want the counselors to come in and touch and agree with you. Come on down. They'll touch and agree with you. They'll pray with you. If that's you, come on. Wherever you are this morning. The Lord want to do some marvelous things in your life. Want to make a change in your life. Maybe you're feeling like I'm not sure if God can. Well, the Spirit of the Lord told the prophet, go and tell Asa. Go and tell him. It was his job to tell. It was their job to respond. And the Bible says, and they responded. Not only did they respond, but even after that, God gave them even more years of peace. And they didn't have to worry about anything. I don't know about you, but peace is the way to go. Peace is the way to go. If you're sitting there and you feel like your heart is about to beat out of your chest, then that's you. But don't feel bad, because all of us had to come the same way. Come on, somebody. Amen? Are you here today? Are you here today? Amen. God bless you. Isn't that some message? You know, we take a lot of things for granted. Be, be it our health, be it our blessings, we take them for granted. I think we've come to that part of the service where we actually show our gratitude to God. So, let us today... You know, in Malachi, it's in chapter 3, verses um, 8 to 10. God sort of said, dare me. And if you're, not, if you're not going through that just to find out what God could do for you, try it. Just try it. He also says, you know, in, in 2 Corinthians, he says, you know, God loves, you know, a cheerful giver. Are you a cheerful giver? Or do you give and then complain later? Either way, it's by commandment. Then let's be in obedience. Let, you know, let us all stand as we go.
Let us hold our envelope just, you know, high enough above our heads. Let us pray. Father Almighty, we thank you for this opportunity this morning to serve you, to be in obedience you know, to you. Father Almighty, giving our tithes is in obedience. We have no choice, you know, we really have no choice but to be obedient to you because you demand it. Father Almighty, bless this offering and tithe. Let it be used, you know, to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's be on. Will the congregation turn to your left and follow the directions of the ushers in the rear? Thank you.